When you're working with the Arduino or even the Raspberry Pi, the number of I2C addresses you have is oftentimes limited. And even when it's not, many of the I2C devices have the same address. So if you want to access them, you have to go in and some of them, I mean, you have to change with a soldering iron. Others of them, you have to do some weird uh, software hacks to them to get them to change address. All that's a real headache. Um, so what I found is this 9548 multiplexing chip uh, will allow you to connect up to eight devices very easily on, the, on just a single I2C bus from the, either the Arduino or the Pi, whatever you're using. Uh, and it's, let me tell you, it is so much easier. So anyway, let me show you the hardware and software behind that. Let's do a demo of what we got going on. This is our circuit board with the real-time clock and the infrared sensor, and of course the Arduino's down here. The output from the circuit is over here. You can see the uh, temperature in both centigrade and Fahrenheit. Oh, I should get this out of the way. And when I approach the infrared sensor, it will go up and it will read my body temperature as it should. And then of course up here, we have the real time clock telling me when that reading was taken. So that is uh, what's going on here. That's what this was designed to do. With this circuit, I could put up to eight different I2C devices, you know, different sensors, uh, any kind of output device, say a card reader, anything like that, that I needed to do. This is the hardware behind it. So we have the diagram, the circuit diagram, and then we have uh, an actual photograph of the real circuit. And as you can see, this is a little bit messy. So let's go over it and I think it'll uh, become much clearer. So over here in the diagram, we show the clock line in orange, and that's this wire right here coming down to this pin, which is right there. Then we have the yellow wire, which is the data line, and that comes from A4 down to here, which again is that, it's the third pin on the 9548. Uh, the next things that are interesting are the power lines. So this is five volt from the Arduino and ground. And you'll see that here and here. Now I jumper those over to the board. And then from the board, this is the power bus on the board. I take the positive here, connect it to this pin. And then the negative is jumpered to that pin. And you can sort of see that there, but again, it gets kind of tangled. So those are the connections to the Arduino. Now going along, it is easier if we take a look at uh, this first. So this is the MLX90614, same over here. And the orange wire is the clock line. So it's uh, underneath here. So it will be the SC0. That's the orange. It comes over here to the clock line on the 90614. The yellow wire is the data line, and it comes over here to the data on the uh, 90614 like that. So again, in the diagram, it's a lot easier to see than when you have things crossing over the top of each other and so on. The next ones are the, the green line is the data line for the real-time clock, the DS3231. And then the orange line, as always, is the clock line for the real-time clock. As you can see on this chip, uh, it has data zero, uh, clock zero, data one, clock one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can have up to eight different devices uh, I2C devices being driven from this chip, which is a real convenience because you don't have to change the address uh, on these devices. You can use the hardwired or the, I should say, the default uh, addresses on these devices. And boy, let me tell you, that is so much easier. Okay, so um, yeah, that's it for the hardware. It's uh, a lot simpler than it looks uh, in the photograph, so I thought we would go through this and uh, help tie these, uh, the uh, uh, diagram to the actual photograph. This is the software that is driving this over here. And I am going to focus on just two little pieces of this software. One of them is right here, this TCA address at zero hex 70. And this is the default address for the TCA 9548 uh, extender. 
And the other bit of code is this very small routine, the TCA select right here, because these are, these are the only two things I need to utilize this uh, bus extender. So yeah, all the rest of this is to drive my uh, I2C devices. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, quite simple to use this 9548. Okay, so let's look through the code. This is written for the Arduino in C, and the concept is to access multiple I2C devices via this 9548 bidirectional translating I2C switch, which I've always referred to as a bus extender. And the two devices we have are the 90614, which is the infrared non-contact sensor, and the other is the DS3231 real-time clock. The um, the MLX90614 is going to give us the temperature in both Fahrenheit and centigrade, which is what we're seeing over here. And the DS3231 is providing us with the real-time wall clock, which we see right there. This first active line of code is to include the wire library, which is the I2C bus, and the uh, Arduino needs that to make the connection to the 9548. This line right here is important for the 9548 because this is the default address of the device. And this is the device that the Arduino is going to look at. The next thing is the Adafruit MLX90614. And this is for the infrared sensor. Some of this I will go through pretty quickly because I have detailed videos on both the uh, 3231 and the 90614. Uh, let's see, next is the is a line where I define a nickname for this string and I also tell the uh, Arduino that the default address I'm using is the 5A in hexadecimal and then I give the DS3231's default address uh, as 068 hexadecimal. These next two strings are to decode the date and time. So where it says Tuesday here is I'm getting it out of this. Uh, the rest of this, a lot of this is, is coming from these variables. So these are the BCD variables coming from the real-time clock. Again, I've got a detailed video on all that. The next line is the setup and so we connect to the USB COM3 port, which is right there. And then we tell the MLX, which is right here, the 90614 to begin. So we're initializing that. This is one of those important pieces of code. So this is what actually accesses the 9548 over here. And so what's gonna happen is we are going to, first of all, we're gonna tell the 9548 which of these devices we are going to access. And so it's like SD0, SD1, uh, two through seven. So in other words, one of these eight devices. And we do that with this, this uh, routine right here. So this I right here, we're gonna see this again, and this is the number of the device we are accessing. So the first line of code in here says, if I is greater than seven return, that's because there are not more than seven devices on this. Uh, the next one is to uh, open the address to the TCA 9548. So we're opening the I2C bus to that address. Uh, then we do a wire write to the address. And so what we're doing is we're left shifting this and using a little bit of, of cleverness to tell the uh, bus uh, which of these devices to access. And it's just a left bit shift by one, so we're multiplying the value by, the value coming in by two. And then the last thing we do is we have a, an end transmission, so we force the data transmit. And this is all kind of standard I2C bus stuff. This code, as you can see, is for the MLX90614. It has nothing to do with our 9548 other than it's just a sample device. But this first line right here is very important. This is where we tell the 9548 
which device we're going to access. So as you can see, it's device number zero and we give it a zero and literally that's how simple it is. The rest of this code is exactly the way you would access the device if it were connected directly to the Arduino. So let me say it again. The rest of this code is exactly the way you would access the device if it were connected directly to the Arduino. So all you need is this statement right here and it redirects the request through the bus to this device and that's what this thing is doing. It's just doing a, a rechanneling of the request to whichever device. And it's really that simple. I, I struggled with this for a long time. I tried to do everything stupid you could possibly do with this. And finally, I just said, wait a minute, maybe all this does is, all, all it's doing is telling me which device along here to select. And that was it, that was it. So all the rest of it is the same. The addressing of the device, the access of the device, the way you access the device, everything else is still the same. So yeah, uh, I struggled with this until I got over my own stupidity. And, and then this is it. This is just the, you say, okay, tell it which device you want. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, up through seven. Done. Okay, so uh, this is the same code I have in another program, in another video rather, to access the uh, infrared sensor. And it is what is giving back this data. So this, uh, let me stop the scrolling. So it is what is printing this degree centigrade target. So right here you see that. And printing across here. And then I'm uh, printing the temperature that comes back in centigrade. And then this is the ambient temperature or the background temperature. And that is in the next line. So background, MLX read ambient, serial print, centigrade. And then these next two lines do exactly the same thing here in Fahrenheit. So this is all that we need to, to access the 90614. And um, again, the only difference between connecting it directly and using the 9548 is this line right there. Yeah, it's really that easy. This code between this comment and this comment is all about the DS3231 real-time clock except for this line right there. So let's go up here and, and start through this. I'll go through it again quickly. I've got another video on how to do this stuff. Uh, but we define this routine. It's binary coded decimal to decimal. And what it does is it converts BCD to decimal. I won't go through it in detail. Uh, down here, we get the information from the real-time clock and we request seconds, uh, minutes, hours, day of week, date, month, and year. And once again, all we have to do is tell it which device we want it to go to. So down here, it's device number one, which is the real-time clock. The rest of this code looks exactly like uh, when you connect it to the, directly to the Arduino. So we go through here. We uh, send a wire transmission request to this address, which is the DS3231. We do a write to that address to set the register pointer to that position. We end transmission, which tells the real-time clock to return the data. Yes, that's an oddity of I2C. Then we get the next seven bytes, which are second, minute, hour, day of week, date, month, and year. And then the next routine is just going to print out what we got right here, uh, format it and print it. And so this routine calls this and it is a second minute, hour, day of week, date, month, and year. These are all pointers to those variables there. Uh, then we do formatting. So we do serial print. I add the 2000 to the year, otherwise it would return just a 20, so I get 2020. Uh, and here I pad the beginning with a zero in case that, you know, it's a nine. I want zero nine, I don't want just nine. And I go down here, I do the same thing to all the rest of this. And then this is the end of my DS3231 routine. Finally down here is the main loop. And so this calls the print time, which is this, real-time clock and then the read temperature which is the routine up here to get our uh, infrared temperature. 
I delay it by one second and that's pretty much it. So as you can see, this is this uh, device, this uh, 9548 is actually a very simple device to use. Just a little bit of code here. Tell it which device you're accessing and otherwise you can't tell the difference uh, that you're going through this multiplexer or going directly to the device from the Arduino. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful and interesting in your Arduino uh, hardware and software endeavors.